for that great introduction. So today I'm going to give you a glimpse onto the future of humanity. So first of all, many of you are associated with the concept of the future. It is certainly unpredictable and it's unattainable to predict it to a certain extent. We can't even predict the stock market or even the behavior of someone we know. So how could we possibly predict the future of our own species on a macro scale? While I was investigating this and trying to understand how could I possibly predict the future of our species, I realized that there is one key metric that had established and conducted our history and will certainly establish our future, and it is human progress. What do I mean by progress? It is certainly an ambiguous concept that is subject to interpretation. However, I interpret it as the technical and technological innovations that have taken us to where we are right now. But the key point isn't this, but it's rather what is behind it. What makes these innovations possible? And it is energy consumption. To further analyze this trend, I have a graph about gross domestic product, which I think many of you are familiar with, and uh, total energy consumption. As you can see, both lines are almost proportional, meaning that there is a direct relationship among them. And what does this tell us? This tells us that we can empirically conclude that an increase in total energy consumption would therefore result in an increase in, in gross domestic product, within, which in other words translates to human progress. Because as you know, gross domestic product is the modern economic indicator about growth, progress, etc. But Really, how can we apply this concept? How can we apply this idea that real GDP and total energy intertwine to give us some sort of relationship about the future? So for this, let me introduce Dr. Nikolai Kardashev. He was a renowned Russian astrophysicist uh, which, who, who died recently and he was a really important human being because he developed something really important in the quest of, ex of finding extraterrestrial and alien civilizations. Many people called him crazy because he was really obsessed with this idea about alien civilizations and trying to find them. And in the pursuit of this, he created something called the Kardashev skill. As you can see, it's quite enigmatic and the numbers kind of blow us out. However, this scale uh, scales uh, civilizations into three types. Type 1, Type 2 and Type 3. Where Type 1 is planetary, Type 2 is stellar and Type 3 is galactic. And this scale, what it does intrinsically is to categorize civilizations given, given on their energy output or energy consumption. And now, to give you some context, we are currently ranked at 0 0.75 in the scale. And you would say, oh, but we're pretty close to getting to 1, but really not. This scale is exponential, or you could call it also logarithmic, which means that a short increase after 0 0.75 could probably take even more energy consumption or even more time than the previous 0 0.75. And what does this mean? Also, this means that that 0 0.75, we have constructed it since the dawn of humanity, probably since the rise of the modern human, which is the Homo sapiens, which was about 300,000 years ago. So therefore, as we are in the 0 0.75 in the scale, we're probably trying to figure out a way to become a planetary civilization, to fully harness the energy from our home, home planet and become this type one civilization, which may seem kind of magical and fabulous. However, before we do this, we have a clear problem. So, if we continue this 3% increase in energy consumption, which is the trend in our recent history, I can predict that we would reach type 1 status in around 150 to 200 years, which seems close. It could be even considered generational, and even our kids or grandkids could even live to this type 1 status. But as I said previously, we had a real big problem. And it's not wars, it's not famine, it's not a pandemic. It, they are fossil fuels. Currently, 80% of our energy comes directly and is directly dependent from fossil fuels. And why is this bad? Well, because all of our energy consumption, what we're doing actually right now, is extremely detrimental for the environment and may create a long-lasting negative impact, which may even compromise our existence as humans and our longevity as a race. And you would say, oh, well, solving this is pretty easy. We just need to invest in greener alterna alternatives, in sustainable energy, in renewable energy, but actually this is really challenging. A recent study published by the International Energy Agency suggested that a full transition to renewable energy in planet Earth to power all of its inhabitants would require 
an upfront investment of 45 trillion US dollars. If we divide this over the next 42 years, we get almost more than one trillion dollars annually. And this is even more than the GDP of many industrialized nations, which makes this almost unattainable and unrealistic in the short or midterm, which makes it even more difficult. However, for the sake of the thought experiment, let's assume that we overcame this. We are now a type 1 civilization that can enjoy fully of all the resources and energy in their home planet. And now, as we are expansionist, we are determined, and we are certainly greedy human beings, we would like to expand and even colonize our solar system. And therefore, we would be aiming to what I call, what Kardashev calls type 2, a stellar civilization, a civilization capable of fully utilizing the resources available in its solar system. If we continue with the same metric of 3%, yearly energy increase, I can predict that we would reach type 2 status in around 2,000 to 5,000 years, which also seems quite far, but yet it's not that big in this massive scale. And therefore, in order to do this, we would have to harness all the energy of our solar system. And it's actually quite a complex topic, but actually a physicist from the 20th century actually predicted this. And his name is Freeman Dyson, and he proposed the Dyson Swarm. This hypothetical megastructure I have projected here is called the Dyson Swarm, as I just said. And it has solar panels encapsulating the sun and actually take all its massive energy output and convert it into regular electricity we human beings could use. It certainly is unachievable from a viewpoint of engineering and from our current manufacturing capabilities. However, through a mathematics and physics point of view, it's relatively straightforward. To give you more numerical facts, it actually would produce 400 septillion watts per second, which is a trillion more times than our current worldwide energy usage. And to give you more specifications about this megastructure, it would need 30 quadrillion solar panels and each of them of one square kilometer. If we were to do them of the thinnest and lightest possible material, we would have to utilize the equivalent of 100 quintillion tons of material. And what does this translate to? It is the equivalent of disassembling completely a planet the size of Mercury and to its last atom, which is certainly something unimaginable from our current experience and knowledge regarding engineering and manufacturing. However, again, for the, thought of the, for the sake of the thought experiment, let's assume that we overcame this. We are type 2. Our descendants now can fully utilize the energy from our solar system. We can do things that we have never even thought of before and as we are again intrinsically expansionist, we are ambitious and we are determined, we would probably like to embark a, an interstellar journey and even become a type 3 civilization, which is galactic, which is a civilization capable of fully utilizing the energy available in its galaxy. However, at this point, everything becomes more philosophical. Talking about numbers at this point is unimaginable about a 10 with 37 zeros on its right, it's just incomprehensible for the human mind. So I will not talk about numbers because we humans cannot comprehend such magnitudes. However, what I can talk about and what we can dis discuss about is actually how long it would take to get us there and the technology we could potentially utilize once we're at that point. Again, following the 3% increase in energy consumption yearly, Again, following this metric, I can predict that it would take to reach type 3 status in around a million years. And at this point, we would have some technology that is unimaginable for our current civilization, and it's basically the dream of any engineering. Uh, for example, we could have stellar engines capable of powering whole solar systems into spaceships in order to explore galaxies and even universes. Also, we could even harness the energy from black holes or even the energy of space-time itself. That's the biggest single mystery that humanity has had, how to get energy out of nowhere, out of singularities. So therefore, at that time, that would be basically a piece of cake to harness and a piece of cake to do. On the other hand, we could potentially build the EM drive, which is a hypothetical vehicle that could warp space-time and we could travel at faster speeds than light and basically make what we call teleportation even possible. So, what if I told you that there are even more stages? I will not go into them, but I, will, but I could even talk about type 4, type 5, and even type 6 
civilizations. These civilizations are capable of fully utilizing the energy of universes and even multiverses. But at this point, everything becomes farly philosophical and theoretical, and I don't want to get into that. So what if I told you that the images I have projected in my back weren't, de weren't designed or produced by any human being? They were actually produced by an artificial intelligence. When I asked the artificial intelligence to render and interpret the face, the phrase, humans with the energy of the universe. As I asked the artificial intelligence this phrase, these were the results. Certainly enigmatic, interesting. They resemble godlike figures and with no evident organic characteristics. And so, this is the perspective of another organism or system about what the future of humanity beholds. However, I think the future is beautiful because we can't really predict it. We will never know the true course of events of history and what really upholds us. We won't know if a war will end our existence or if the sun will explode and will end. We really don't know anything. However, with some, some clever inventions such as the Kardashev scale, we can prognosticate certain milestones about the future of humanity and try to predict and motivate scientists to achieve this level of innovation and of creative intelligence. Thank you.